Of course, in one sense, the first essential for a man's being a good citizen is his possession of the home virtues of which we think when we call a man by the emphatic adjective of manly. No man can be a good citizen who is not a good husband and a good father, who is not honest in his dealings with other men and women, faithful to his friends and fearless in the presence of his foes, who has not got a sound heart, a sound mind, and a sound body. Exactly as no amount of attention to civil duties will save a nation if the domestic life is undermined. Or there is lack of the rude military virtues which alone can assure a country his position in the world. In a free republic the ideal citizen must be one willing and able to take arms for the defense of the flag, exactly as the ideal citizen must be the father of many healthy children. A race must be strong and vigorous. It must be a race of good fighters and good breeders, else its wisdom will come to naught and its virtue be ineffective and no sweetness and delicacy, no love for and appreciation of beauty and art or literature, no capacity for building up material prosperity can possibly atone for the lack of the great virile virtues. But this is aside from my subject, for what I wish to talk of is the attitude of the American citizen in civic life. It ought to be axiomatic in this country that every man must devote a reasonable share of his time to doing his duty and the political life of the community. No man has a right to shirk his political duties under whatever plea of pleasure or business. And while such shirking may be pardoned in those of small cleans it is entirely unpardonable in those among whom it is most common in the people whose circumstances give them freedom in the struggle for life. In so far as the community grows to think rightly, it will likewise grow to regard the young man of means who shirks his duty to the state in time of peace as being only one degree worse than the man who thus shirks it in time of war. A great many of our men in business, or of our young men who are bent on enjoying life as they have a perfect right to do if only they do not sacrifice other things to enjoyment, 